look at this. It's Duff TV action here in the under-12s. And Jai Millwood, 100 games in junior football. He's already a veteran. What an effort, 100 games. And we think that might be a record here, but at least the Lindisfarne junior football team. But potentially a record in the STJFL. We may have to get in contact as Jai runs through the banner with the rest of the two blue side. We may have to just go deep into the archives of the STJFL. Maybe we need to ring Crips and Master Baker. Is there some of the sponsors? Divine Plastering, Amplified Contractors and Kent Steel Painting. Thanks to those three companies that are sponsoring today's game from, I think most of those from Lindisfarne. As the players are just getting warmed up now. They're going to get warmed up. The reason being is that it's a typical wintry day here in southern Tasmania. There's Nick Davey doing the instructions there. And the coach for Lindisfarne 2 Blues is Adrian Goodwin. And there's the whiz. Robbie Devine, the former North Hobart forward. He's going to be the man with the whistle. There's two umpires out here today. Robbie's going to be one of them. And we're into the action at the moment. So Lindisfarne have won the toss. They're going to the right-hand side of the screen, which is where the wind is. It's where the wind will blow for most of the day. And I've also got three players who are running around today from the under-12 Tasmanian schoolboys team. And Archie Devine's one of those. Young Brain, who will get a bit of the ball today. Now he's number 26. And the other one still, that might have been Brain just then. And the other one's young Nick still. They're all on the side. But some other decent players in both sides is Hay in the Ruck. Brain with a kick away. Lindisfarne with their first decent attack going forward. The ball's just chipped further afield. Had a high tackle. The umpire said, no, it's not. It was Luke Ather going. And here's Lindisfarne with the first opportunity. But it goes to the left and a minor score. The wind will push the ball towards that side of the ground for most of the day. I rarely, we'll probably rarely see the ball over this side. As we see the eucalyptus trees in the background there. They are copying a shellacking at the moment. It's a dangerous kick. Now it's marked by the 100 gamer, I think, Jai Millwood. And he's having an opportunity to kick goal in the first minute and a half. We really see the wind picking up, and even the seagulls are struggling. It's a be difficult kick. He's on the attacking side of the ground, but he's going to have to aim this out towards the right goalpost to sort of swing it back around. So not an easy kick, and there you see him trying to Turned it onto his boot. Unfortunately, he's kicked it into the man on the mark, and it's going to be a ball up. So an example of the challenging conditions that the teams face here. And it's going to be Dingle with the ball for Clarence. Hay now picks it up. He tries to find a teammate just to the right of him. And that was Ryan. Running through with Stewart. Tackle laid. Now Hay again with a handball out. Once again, it's Elijah Ryan. Gets clear now. Onto his right boot. Works the ball up towards half forward. Sylvester coming out. He turns. They don't argue. Handball's all right. It's going to be clean, team cleaned up here. I think that's Jones. Jones kicks it forward. Pushing and shoving. Coming through was Oliver Hart. Lindisfarne again. Trying to work the ball up with a little bit of system. Marriott. He goes to his knees. Little kick off the ground. That might be Baston. And it's going to go out of bounds. In fact, that might be Isaac Fry. So the umpire balls it up. Quick kick out of that congested area back into the middle of the ground. So Clarence with the chance to push it forward. Hay and Hall. Hall pass him. Now it's Sergeant. Sergeant runs. Kicks towards half forward. Juggling mark nearly by Garrett. Smother is fantastic. That just keeps that ball inside their forward 50 for a little longer. Then it's chipped forward again. Marriott. He picks it up. Then he goes back again because it just slipped out of his fingers. Tackle lay. That's nearly holding the football. Hole on the edge of that one. And it dribbles out of bounds. So a frenetic start to this game. Three and a half gone. And as we mentioned, the ball is going to be on that side of the ground for a large portion of this 
day's play. Hay in the ruck. Hall with an opportunity. Tried to pick it up. Dingle doesn't clear it. Still in the area for Lindisfarne. It's still an opportunity for them to score. And running through is Sargent. Round one, round two. Has a bounce. Tries to check side that ball out to his teammates. A clever bit of football, but the ball's been dropped. And swirly conditions going to be challenging all day. Now we've got two number ones today. Charlie Tenbroke and Dylan Baker. And we don't have a lot of description on the difference between the two young lads. So we hope to maybe guess that one throughout the day. One has a little bit of gold on their boots, I believe. It's not an overly different. Most of the kids these days have got the black boots. There's one nice green pair there, the fluorescent green. Clarence inside there, forward 50. Had it there for about 30 seconds. They might go back again here. Laying a fair bit of pressure is Lockie Jones for Lindisfarne. Now it's Sargent. Uses the ball really well. Great decision from Sargent. Finds Garrett. Garrett now into the pocket. Leading out was James Linden. James Linden keeps it in for now. He handballs the ball further on. He finds Sylvester. Sylvester in the pocket. Still in an opportunity. Goes past Clark. Clark's still there. And just rolling and rolling away from that young lad. Might have been Nick Steele. And free kick's been given away here. Fletcher Home was the man that was the young lad that was trying to see on the replay again. Yeah, might have been a push in the back. Yeah, it was. Yeah, easy call for the umpire. So it's come out to this river side of the ground for the first time today. Hall, another opportunity him just slips through his fingers as he was leading out from that centre wing position and a lot of players around the ball and we'll have a hold up here. Hay, climbing up in the ruck. Big contest with Noah Stewart. Tackle laid. And a slinging tackle has resolved the ball just to go to Marriott. Marriott with some pace. So often at this age, those that with pace do stand out in junior football and in junior sport in general. But the science around neurology suggests that their pace will start to lessen at some stage. And often their skill level doesn't increase. They don't end up becoming the star footballer or don't continue to be. So you've got to nurture that talent. You can't just have pace for the whole life. You've got to have there's some pace. It's that player being dragged down, and it's going to be holding the football here. And we'll see Blake Garrett getting dragged to the ground. A really good tackle. Those tackles from behind are worth plenty. The Sylvester in amongst a stack of Lindisfarne two blues. He's on the edge again here, Sylvester. Now it's Goodwin for the two blues. And that's not a bad option. Just get the ball onto your boot and get it rolling forward. Try and get a player out of position. You're going to have to play from behind in when you're kicking with the breeze. See there the wind going through the, uh, the players' uniforms and also the umpires' bib there. And Elijah Ryan for Clarence. Now Marion. Into a dangerous spot. There's two Lindisfarne players here. Hall might get on the end of this one. Hall in the pocket. Hall ran out of space. He ran out of the angle and out of bounds on the foot. So early stages, Clarence doing most of the attacking. Lindisfarne holding their own. Probably playing, maybe an extra play in defence. Now that's come out. Hay nearly took the mark. He just kicks it off the ground. Didn't have a teammate there, and then goes and lays a tackle on a player who didn't have the football. Still a chance for Lindisfarne, but it's gone to the near side. And a second missed opportunity. And out of bounds and a full, a couple of behinds early on. And the Farn pressuring here. Pollard ran a long way out until he was provided some pressure from the opposition. That's a little throw, I reckon. Just grabbed the ball in his hands there. Max Sylvester and a little netball throw out the side there to the player running past. See this on the Mood Food replay. Mood Food and Jackson Motor Company. JMC are our friends from Duff TV. They allow the van and the Duffettes to get out and about throughout this southern Tasmanian football season. Covering a lot of STJ felt, Duff TV. Myself and Tubes, Taylor and Hoppy. Usually the vocals behind. And I've got a variety of camera people that are doing the work. Ben Duffy. 
excellent work experience today up there on the camera. Doing a terrific job so far. He started doing camera work many, many years ago now. Young Ben. Marion. Showing a turn of speed again. Gets into a space and now he's slung as he handles that one out wide. And it goes out in front of Baston, out of bounds. We love our junior footy here on Duff TV. We love maybe showing the next star or the next passionate administrator, whoever it might be that's currently playing. All of these guys, I'm sure, are enjoying their football and all the lasses that we see as well. Goes up to half forward. That's Jai Millwood. Love to see him get his shot on goal here in the first quarter. He had one opportunity early where the, the person in the mark got in the way. And he just had a, a very slight opportunity there. We've nearly gone 10 minutes. It's Anzac Park. It's deep in winter here in southern Tasmania. It's STJFL action on Duff TV. <coughs> Sylvester, as so often. He and Married are the two at the moment that have got that explosive speed. Finding their way in congested areas, and there's Marriott, right on cue, just falls over. And right on cue is the boundary line, the boundary line, the friend at the moment. And it's probably fortunate there is no boundary umpire. There's contest in the ruck, as coming into the ruck there is Lucas Dingle. The Clarets, high into the goal square, opportunity for the two blues. This stage is just one out. Still an opportunity for the two blues. Quick shot on goal. That could have snuck through. It has. So Lindisfarne have their first goal. Ten minutes gone. So they get one into the breeze. Marriott coming over and giving a high five. We don't actually have number 17, unfortunately, in our book. We'll try and get his number before the end of the day. They tried to clear it here, Clarence, but it probably just needed to be a quick kick out, although that often results in going straight to the opposition. And a clever snap in the pack and Lindisfarne with their first on the board. So they're one, two, eight. We're not too fussed about scores in under 12, so I'm sure the kids are, but we keep the score going here on the Jackson Motor Company scoreboard is rushing through as Flynn Ryan. So there is some speed in the middle of both teams. I'd say Flynn Ryan's probably one of those players who's got that little bit of extra pace. Up forward, married at the back of the pack. The ball just spills out of his fingers, but it goes forward to forward. Lindisfarne, just difficult. The ball just not bouncing where you want it to be. And out of bounds, or I should say throw up here. So coming to the ruck is Dingle for Clarence. He's up against Noah Stewart. Noah Stewart lays a tackle. Pushing down is Dingle as well. Looked like a little throw at the side, but umpires are usually pretty... I think the umpire in this level is actually outstanding. I'm not sure they're actually trained umpires, but they, I'm sure these everyone knows the rules out there. It's the way that they just let the, you know, the game kind of flow a little bit. Marriott now, tied in the pocket. Gets it back to one of those areas where you can often get a sneaky goal, but it's picked up by Judd Pollard, and he clears it for now. Pollard finds it out towards Blake Garrett. Garrett misses him. Lindisfarne with a chance to go forward again. Swinging out of that one tackle. Handball's not to particularly anybody. Tap forward, and now the Clarence players come in and provide some pressure. There's a quick shot on goal. It's rolling, rolling. It's not rolling the right way. And it just misses for a behind. And here's an action replay. As Marriott came in, he'll come in a second here in the, chat, the, uh, the mood food replay. A bit of athletic work. Great pick up. They say clean between you below your knees. It just means that you're able to pick it up and accelerate in one smooth motion. It's a skill level players have, and the, the really good junior and senior players do it so often under so much pressure. It's worth gold. I reckon it's nearly as, as relevant as a contested mark these days. The ability to actually get that ball and win it and get that handball out. There's an example. So the handball out to Sylvester. Sylvester in the middle. Driving the ball up, trying to find Ryan. Ryan now knocks the ball over. Clarence move it back further forward. Ryan again. Ryan runs towards goal. Ryan kicks. I think he was looking for Atha. Luke Atha was there, but it just swung to the left of him and defensive mark taken. Kick comes out. Linden trying to win it. Then he just stubs his boot into it. Goodwin. 
Clarence with an opportunity to score here. Linden again. Now he's an opportunity. Ather, just get it off the ground. Coming in, defensive pressure laid at the last minute. Ather again. He gets tackled by two Lindisfarne players. And the ball is held up. Fortunately, it was held up because they are in a bit of danger here. We've got about a minute left. A goal here for Clarence would be worth a stack at the moment. Mansfield over the top for Clarence. Out towards the pocket. Now there's a tackle laid on Baston. Baston's held up. The umpire calls play on. Baston tries to just flick the ball out towards Macy Clark. Macy Clark then lays a tackle. Another tackle laid. It's pretty frenetic stuff at the moment. On his knees is Sylvester. Didn't quite get the handle. Quick shot across the face of goal. It's going to get out towards Garrett. Garrett in the pocket. Snap. He's just missed. Clarence get their first score. It could have been a goal. It would have been a pretty crucial one. But it's only a minor score. So Lindisfarne holding on. They've got a slender lead at the moment. It's hard to know exactly how strong this breeze is and how much it's worth for the opposition. Marriott. Pollard. And I reckon that's going to be it for the quarter. Marriott now. Just asking, where's that man of the mark going to be? And oh, it's the lunch bell. Well, that's a little unusual. The kids probably react to that and think, excellent. We've been playing, now we've got to go back into school. But that actually indicates it is quarter time here at Anzac Park. And what was an engrossing first quarter of football on the 100th game for Jai Millward. What a day for him. And I reckon he's pretty glad that Duff TV has come down here with their friends from Divine Plastering, Kent Steel Painting and Amplifield Contractors. That's Adam Bain at Amplifield Contractors. I imagine that's his son running around there at the moment. He's had a, a pretty good first quarter. It's been close, tight. Lindisfarne got the only goal of the quarter. And they have the early eight-point lead here as they'll have a bit of a break here. So coaches will probably just have a bit of a conversation, Nick and Adrian around the changes, the distinct changes that need to be made when you're now defending in the breeze as the second quarter is underway. And there's Devine just getting the action started. He's counting the players. Maybe doing the 6-6-6. Six, six and six. I'm not actually 100% sure. We've seen that a few times in senior football. I'm not sure it's a big factor in junior football. Clarence with the first possession here. And they're going with the breeze in this quarter. There's Clark, just on the edge of that one. So it'll be interesting to see what the changes are. As we mentioned, at quarter time, some minor changes will be required. Some small adjustments as Clark laying a good tackle. There's a ball will hold up in the breeze, but go a long way behind you, and that's what we'll see a little bit, is the ball just falling short. So Clarence with an opportunity to score. A goal scoring range here definitely for Clarence Marriott. So prominent. Probably taken high there Marriott. And the umpire Green is going to get a free kick. See this on the move food replay. The left hand there. And taking him high. Ten broke. I hope. <laughs> Over the top. Finds a bit of run from Archie Devine. Devine off to Baston. Baston kicks onto the chest of that Lindisfarne forward, Williams. He reaches over with his hands. Tackle laid, that's a good one. Sylvester, and that's throwing the football. So, indication of how important it is to tackle and lay a bit of pressure on the opposition. Nearly a mark to Noah Stewart. Hay on the edge, tried to pick it up. Stewart again. Marriott's now. He's ground level and working his socks off at the moment. Sylvester in defence. And Polly will stay there for a little bit into the breeze, but I imagine he might work back into the middle of the ground. That's a fantastic mark by Millward, the 100 gamer, just checking his hand. So Millward looking for an option. I don't think he's within scoring range. It's definitely not with his breeze. He's a good kick, though. Kicks into the dangerous position. 
just at the top of the square. Clarence trying to defend gamely here. Sylvester was trying to knock that one out. There's a, the scrubby kick. That's okay. Just release a little bit of pressure back into the middle of the ground. Good contest here as Baker goes in. Trying to win it is James Linden for Clarence. Now the relieving handball. Clarence with a handball and then a kick up towards two on two. But unable to get in front position was Pollard. And a really good defensive mark taken by Ransley. Ransley releases the ball, just hits it out towards the, the town side of the Anzac Park here. Good one. Good kick. Looks like Brain with the fluoro pink or orange boots. Most of the kids are going for the, the black boots these days. They're back in fashion. Give it a couple of years and we'll see a little bit more married hair with the, the long locks and the headband. It's pretty common in junior football these days. We did a, as we do a few of the older games in the SDJFL and also in the independent school boys and girls team. Well, and the boys have a lot more longer hair and that's been tapped through. In fact, it's been tapped over the boundary line. There's going to be a throw up here. Darcy Goodman getting his right hand to it. Defending when he needed to. Old fashioned foot in there. He gets a little tap on the head from his teammate. Stewart in the ruck coming over the top. It was Mansfield rucking on that occasion for Clarence. Kick doesn't get that deep out of the forward line. Hay tries to get it. He might get it back here again here. Hay uses his hands. Now the quick kick in. A lot of Lindisfarne players around that. Baker, Tenbroke. We'll just keep calling them both. Hasn't been cleared. It's been marked. Clarence will load up again. High kick. Looking for Pollard. He was probably the only Clarence player there. Maybe they needed to have someone come out for a lead. Just rolling the ball just in front of his feet was James Linden. Clarence progressing towards their goal. Ensuring Linden just needed to turn his body, try and get it towards the open goal. He couldn't. And a minor score, and Clarence had their second behind. So let's see what Lindisfarne could do here, is they could just work the ball. Well, they haven't, and it's been marked by Sylvester. Sylvester chips in. Looking for the hands of Mansfield. Mansfield couldn't mark it. Sylvester again. Harry Sargent. Harry Sargent knocks it through. Now Lindisfarne. Shepard laid. And then a tackle laid. She might have been Max Sylvester with a tackle. We'll see on the Mood Food replay. There was a lot of space. Good play there from that Lindisfarne play because he handballed it off and then he actually laid a little block. But there was just so many players around the pack. And out of bounds. In fact, it's gone through for a minor score. So he brought him here by... Lockie Fitzgerald. Good kick from Fitzgerald. He finds Devine starting to get a little bit of the ball now. <coughs> Devine off half back. He kicks in towards Ryan. Ryan's starting to get a little bit as well. So a few players that we expected to be dangerous today. Just getting a little bit of the ball. Stewart coming through, and it's just hacked it out to the middle. Now we've got a foot race on. Who can get to that one first? It's going to be to Baston. Baston now. High kick, swirling in the breeze. Goes past Lockie Jones. Lockie Jones tries to go back and win it again. Baston in there. Handball over and just thumped forward by Kobe Williams. Marriott on his knees. Keeps the ball in play. Now it's just knocked over the boundary line. Out of bounds. And there's a fan over there, rugged up with about every piece of clothing she may have in her wardrobe. You need it too. It's a little chilly here. There is a nor nor Wesley blowing across this Anzac Park venue. And some hardy supporters, parents, they play a pretty important role. As Mark being taken here by Towns. Baker goes in. Lays a tackle. Yeah, so the, uh, the, uh, the parents don't just bring the kids to the game. They umpire, they coach. They bring the drinks out. Give some directions from the sideline. They cheer, clap, hug when there's a goal. Beep the horn of the car. It's a pretty full-on job for a parent when it's junior sport on. And winter is the time for junior sport too in Australia. Got this... Uh, most junior sport participation happens because our love of netball 
in cricket and football slash soccer. Hockey is really popular, so there's a lot of sport probably happening today on a Sunday throughout Tassie. And Towns just standing on the edge of that pack. Holding it up and we'll have a free kick here to Clarence. So the only score on the board, well, the only goal on the board at the moment is from Lindisfarne. And just desperately hanging on was Brain then. And he's just been able to stop any attacking run then from Elijah Ryan. And have a throw up. So just slightly attacking here from centre wing for Lindisfarne. Quick kick out of the pack. Bashton nutmegs his opponent. Quick goes for kick forward. It's going to be a chance for Jones. Jones in the pocket scores a wonderful goal. So really out of nothing. The ball being pushed forward by Bastion and Co. from the Lindisfarne 2 Blues. It might have been Brain out of the pack there. An awkward bounce just over the top of Harry Sargent. There's a little nutmeg. A little squirrely kick by Lockie Jones. There he is. Great little snap from him. And into the breeze, Lindisfarne have their second goal. So an important response required here from Clarence. They've only got a couple of scores on the board, and they're only the ones of single variety. So Lindisfarne attack again here at Anzac Park. Baker. Tap forward by... Hey, look at the pressure here from Marriott. Macy Clark was chasing him. Dodging, re weaving through one is Ryan. Here's an opportunity for Clarence to score there first. It's going over the top. It's just gone over the top of the head of Judd Pollard. And another minor score here for the Clarence Kangaroos, the white variety. Kick comes out. Well, oh, you can just see the wind there. Take that ball. And that is out of bounds. And that'll be, well, not deliberate, but it's going to be a free kick here to Clarence. He was in the rectangle when he kicked that ball. He hadn't played on, so it's going to be a free kick here to Macy Clark. Let's see what Macy Clark just looks to centre it. And unfortunately, it's gone off the side of her boot. You can see she was looking to centre that to the top of the goal square. But it just came off the side of her right boot and out of bounds on the floor. Marriott now. Kick is good from him. Nearly the mark taken by Watkinson for the two Blues. Now it's out to Mansfield. Tackle laid. Ferocious tackle from Brain. He wasn't going to let anyone go then. And we'll have a ball up here. And we've got Noah Stewart in the ruck. Stewart tries to get his hand over the top of Hay. It's cleared out by Goodwin to the middle. And a bit of speed from Flynn Ryan. Kick over the top. Hay nearly. Well, it might be Mansfield. We'll just see him turn to see who that was. And the umpire said, that's probably pushing it back. It was Hay. He's just coming out and playing in the forward line at the moment. We'll see this on the mood food replay. Right into the back of Goodwin. So ball in defence here for Lindisfarne. Can they find their way through the wall of ruse, the mob of kangaroos, but also the howling breeze that's coming straight into their face. Millwood in defence at the moment. The veteran for the Lindisfarne Tubler. It seems strange to say veteran in an under-12 game. Clarence go forward again. They've had a little bit of the ball in the last few minutes. Hay again just... Couldn't quite reach it in. And then he gets it slapped out of his hands. Then he goes to the handball. Sylvester in the pocket. The protractor pocket. The impossible pocket. Well, certainly impossible with the breeze at the moment. And anyone who can find a little gap where not many others can. I reckon Sylvester's the man. I should say it's Harry Sargent, I should say. Harry Sargent in the pocket. Now that kick out again coming to this side. It's going to be snapped back. But luckily on the defensive line. Is Lockie Fitzgerald. He's playing full back at the moment. So Fitzgerald plays on. Kicks a little wobbly. Now's another chance for the Ruse. It's going over the top. Marriott should defend this one and take it over the boundary line. Just an indication of how difficult that wind is. It moves the ball to left to the right. 
And in the end, it moved it out of the fingers of Marriott and out of bounds. So Hay in the ruck. Stewart. Linden just went through him. And but it'll just come towards us in the commentary position. The Duff TV. And out of bounds. Look for Macy Clark here, just on the, behind the Robbie Devine throw up. Just kept in by Tom Mansfield. Marriott goes to his knees, gets into the crouch position and holds onto the football. Wonderful job by Ned Marriott. We'll see this on the replay, just protecting the space between the defender and the ball. Great indication of he's allowing and creating a little area for him to release it. He couldn't on that occasion, but that's a, a neat bit of skill that he's clearly learnt. Now there's a little push here. It's going to be a free kick to Oliver Talbot. Talbot goes wide. Not a bad option for Talbot, but just being kept in play. Hamble goes over the top by Davey. Marriott's going to get it here from Lindisfarne. Looks further afield, kicks it to the middle of the ground. He's looking for Hall, goes over the top of his fingers. Now some run by Brain. Brain kicks it out wide, looking for the goal kicker Jones. Jones will go again, tries to shove and push it forward. Sylvester. Atha. Atha gets tackled high. May not be a free kick as Nick still came in late. And the umpire will hold it up here. There's about a minute left. Lindisfarne with the only score of the quarter in the goal variety. And it's a pretty important one at the moment. Noah Stewart. It's free kick here. It's going to be to Stewart. So Stewart works it in towards the pocket. Dangerous spot. It's marked. Late in this quarter. I think that's Bastion. And Archie Bastion, who looks pretty dangerous at times. A little electric going forward. He's going to have a shot on goal with around 30 seconds left. Deep in this second quarter. Bastion from the pocket. I reckon he's kicked the two. He has. It was wobbly, but it was straight. And two goals into the wind in this quarter from the Lindisfarne Two Blues and their under-12 team are moving along nicely. And as we mentioned, we're not really sure how many goals it's worth this breeze, but kicking two into it, considering Clarence didn't kick any, they only kicked the one behind, potentially gives Lindisfarne a commanding lead at the moment with Clarence in the second quarter or the second half will be kicking in that first of those two into the breeze. So that is the bell. That indicates half-time here in the under-12 STJFL game. It's a beauty here at Anzac Park. It's Lindisfarne with a couple. They've kicked three, two in that quarter, one in the first. Clarence are yet to get a six-pointer on the board. It's difficult, challenging, wintry conditions. The sun is gone. It's probably taken a few degrees out of the game. There's plenty of heat in this match, and there's plenty of players who are getting a lot of the football. It's difficult to use it well. But it's certainly entertaining nonetheless. But it's very much the day for Jai Millward. 100 games of football at junior level. And we're going to go through back all the archives. So back here again. It is the second half action here on Duff TV. Thanks to Divine Plastering, Kent Still Painting, and Adam Bain, who's got Amplified Contractors. And Robbie Devine, Nick Davey, and Adrian Goodwin, and I'll try and find out who the other umpire is involved in the coaches. Some pretty... And that's a goal early. Is that Bastion again? Bastion's kicked one off the ground in the first 20 seconds. And Lindisfarne have a response from a really good second quarter from them. It was a quick kick going forward, which is not a bad option with the breeze. And you can see Bastion Hall was there. But Bastion, with a little bit more speed, gets it onto his left boot, just chops it through the ground at a wonderful celebration. And the two Blues with the early start here. So Marriott falling to his knees. Still got away the handball. Still in the middle. And Lindisfarne with that stunning early goal. They might get another one here. I think it's Brain. 
He runs, he steadies, and runs into an open goal, and they have two in a minute and a half. And a little bit of classy work. And you love to see those players in brain that steady. We'll see on the Mood Food replay. Just knocked out here. Just trying to see the kick. I'm not sure who had that kick, but look at this from Brain. Yes, he didn't have a lot of pressure. He just had a little bit of pressure from Oliver Hart, who just had a little bit more speed. But look at the way he steadied, composed himself, and kicks a sausage roll. And now it's a commanding lead for Linders Farm. They've got five on the board. They've got two in a minute and a half. And they are away here in this second half. Marriott, the architect in the middle. Here they go again. They're on a roll here, Lindisfarne. Just for now, that's going to be chopped off by Davey. And it's going to be kicked out by Whitelaw. So a couple of prominent surnames for the Clarence Football Club seniors in the 90s and early 2000s. And a good tackle there, slinging tackle. The lads are just a little bit annoyed with each other there. And I'm sure the umpires would have settled things down here. So ruck contest. So Lindisfarne stunning. Two minutes of football, that goal in the last 45 seconds. And now two goals in the first minute and a bit. And they're going for it again. So all the pressure on Clarence. And that one fortunately just misses to the right and a minor score. So Clarence bring it back in into the breeze. Not sure if it's changed too much. Climbing up high. Nearly pulling that one down with one hand was Blake Garrett. Marriott thinks he's got a free kick, but I think it's out of bounds. And it is. And we'll have a throw up here. It's a ruck contest. Linusfarn having the monopoly on this game at the moment. Brain. Oh, brilliant. What a contested mark that was. I think it's Noah Stewart. Yes. We'll just see this quick kick, kick, kick coming in from Brain. And Stewart, just a nice bit of body work. And he's going to have a shot on goal. So we haven't seen too many set shots. He looks pretty focused at the moment. And it's Stewart now. Directly in front. Deliberate approach. Looks like a good drop punt. It's a great drop punt. And the third goal on the board for Lindisfarne in this quarter. And they've got it out to six goals, 440. Clarence, only the five behinds. To see this on the replay, the mood food replay from Noah Stewart. It was a nice set shot. We saw... John Millward in that first quarter. Well, I think it was a bit breezier then. From maybe five metres further back, a similar angle. He found it difficult in the breezy conditions. I'll tell you what, he's not finding it difficult. He's young Noel Marriott. Phonetic for the footy. Looks a little bit like Nat Fife with that ferocity at the football. A little bit of Robinson. The young lad from Lauderdale is now playing for the Lions in the AFL. That's a high tackle. And just another little bit of a push and shove here. This thing's just a couple of clips around here. I think too much. Archie Devine was in there. Maybe his dad might tell him off if he gets too excited. Goes up to half forward, nearly marked by Brain. Then he slung. Handballs the ball out over his head. A lot of Clarence players around this ball. One of those players is Ryan. High up again. No one's got an advantage there. Coming in late and trying to win it was Linden. Linda then lays a tackle. Marriott's in there, trying to force the ball out. And in the end, it's just burrows his way down. And picks it up and throw it back to the umpires. Here he is, Robbie's coming in. Just pull it down, gentlemen. I think the word stop it was called. <laughs> He's shaking his head as well. Now, the Wiz was a pretty fair player. Watch him play a little bit. And he's now the person who has to control things, whereas on the field he was, for all accounts, Someone who had a bit to say. But, uh, kicked a bunch of goals at North Hobart. I actually had the record for the most ever goals at North Hobart Oval. And he or Byron Howard might have the most. But the records are STJFL records. Not senior stuff at the moment we're worried about. Lindisfarne 
on the record at the moment with a, a commanding lead of 35 points. Is coming at the very end and desperate to try and get a little sneaky touch is Jasper of the Hay variety. And he'll now go back into the ruck contest, trying to win it on the ground now in the ruck. Right fist onto it, handballs it out, or she punches it out towards that Linders Farm player, Stewart in there. Quick out of the pack by Lucky Davey. And over the boundary line, just in front of a, a couple of fans there. They're pretty rugged up here today. But a, a really good ground to watch football on. We've got the wonderful spot over here on the river side of the ground. Great improvement. The cricket ground just behind us. The only difficult thing here is there's no proper fence around the ground, so hard to get any gate keepings if, when Lindisfarne playing the seniors. And it's out of bounds again. But I think most people do the right thing. But you can just stand there. There's a gentleman running past. If that was a senior game, or even now, he could just stand there and watch it. One of the nuances of suburban footy. There's a few grounds in Hobart. We don't really have a fence around it preventing patrons not having to pay to get in. But we don't have to pay for junior footy. But this is the beauty here. I hope you're enjoying on Duff TV. Lindisfarne forcing again. They got three early goals. Clarence have just slowed things down. They've got a few better of their players back in defence. Pollard's still back. Trying to just control things, and Clarence just holding it up in the moment, just kicking over the top, tries to find Whitelaw. Whitelaw couldn't quite mark it. Running back in again is Whitelaw. Just on the edge there is Pollard. Tackle laid. That was Brain. He's tackling, he's getting possessions. Now Lindisfarne break out of that pack, congested ball, but the kick is inaccurate and out of bounds. So still a chance for Lindisfarne. Brain in the pocket. Snap on goal. It might be Baston again. It's going to be an easy one. In fact, Baston's in the goal square. So the kick came in from another Lindisfarne player and Baston has the goal. And his goal in the first half was relatively easy and that one was even easier. So the day getting better for young Archie Baston. He's got a couple. I'll see in the Move Food replay. The kick came in. I'm not sure who that was. Desperate attempt to smother it, but once again, the ball carrying the major pack and the Clarence players just unable to react to that one. And another goal to the Farn here. So the two Blues are running away with this game at the moment, but as we've mentioned, we're not too fussed about the score here, but we like to keep it up. It gives it a little bit more narrative for me, the commentator. That also gives us an opportunity to mention Jackson Motor Company. The major... One of the major supporters of Duff TV for the last few seasons and a massive supporter of community football throughout the state. I know that they support community football in the north and a variety of clubs. So thanks to them, without those sort of people, this exposure would happen for this wonderful game of footy, but also the memories, the wonderful memories for Jai Millwood playing his 100th game. Lindisfarne kicking to the middle of the ground. And we've just got a whistle here and... Oh, Young Ben Duffy. Yeah, right. Just zooming in yeah, there on yeah. Robbie Devine. As now the action goes further afield. High kick. It's going to wobble in the breeze. Hall in best position. Hall couldn't quite mark it. Running through with some pace was Dingle for Clarence. It's got to Stewart though. Stewart just off the cricket wicket. Just chipping it out. Wasn't a bad spot for Stewart to kick. Didn't really advantage anyone in the end, but... The leading players coming out. So Sergeant trying to win that for the Ruse. Just tapping it in front. And then it's just whacked out by Pollard. I think he's pretty much had his whole day in defence today, Pollard. And held up. It's going to be a ball up here. So we're at the latter stage of the third quarter. I'd like to see Clarence get a goal. But at the wrong end at the moment. It's a long journey. Around 150 metres-ish the ground distance here it's a fairly narrow ground at this end of the ground it does widen a little bit at the other end if you look at it on Google Maps it does make for interesting footy Lindisfarne play it pretty well but I'll tell you what I've seen a few away teams play this ground well it's got some similar dimensions I think to North Hobart Oval it's a little bit egg shape at one end so it's a good length for junior football 
You went on too much more than 150 metres for under 12, so it starts to become a bit of an effort to get it from one end to the other, and it does mean that at time the ball does get caught up in one end of the ground as a player, particularly with this breeze, it's hard to move it quickly and efficiently. Let's see what Lindisfarne can do here. Let's see if there's another opportunity for Millward to kick going on his 100th. Dashing out of defence. Here come Clarence. Turning around and working onto his right is Whitelaw. He's had a, a pretty good quarter here. Whitelaw finds Sargent. Sargent's got to play a further afield. He decides to hold it now into the middle. Just chopping that one off is Watkinson for Clarence, or for the two blues, I should say. And then he goes to his knees, desperately trying to win the share, and he can't. And 12 minutes gone. And the ball is stopped again in the middle. Hay in the ruck, gets his hand to it, has a second attempt. Stewart with a kick, quick kick forward. The only player there is Lockie Davy. Lachlan Davy has some time, picks it up, looks to go forward. It's a good option because he's got two players there. Sylvester couldn't quite control his kicking out of bounds. So, ruck contest. The ruck at the moment, Fletcher home for Lindisfarne. It's been pretty good. It's a bit of height in this Lindisfarne side. Marriott. Marriott now. His kick is good. Finds a teammate. It's a wobbly kick up to centre half forward. 2v2. Nearly pushing the back there. Hall in involved for Lindisfarne. Just popping out of the hands. On the edge is James Linden. Hall tries to pick it up. Jasper Hay. Jasper Hay again trying to reach in and, and find that football. A lot of players around it. As every time it slows up, just feels it gives time for players to get around it. But Lachlan Davy finds a bit of space and knocks the ball out towards Sargent. He can't keep it. And it's been out there a lot just in front of that little grandstand and out of bounds. There's about a minute and a bit left in this quarter. I actually really enjoy this game of football. Great job, Ben Duffy, on the camera. Still on his apprenticeship, I think. He's done a lot of games now for Duff TV. He's got his licence too now, Ben. So he's going to get out to a few more games. That one's kicked out wide. Right towards Nick Steele. And out of bounds. Thanks to all the Duff TV people. We've got the finals coming up soon. That's going to be exciting. Tubes Taylor. Hoppy. Unfortunately, I'm going to miss the finals this year, which will be a bit of a shame. I'm Jet setting off to the Ashes. Harvey Sargent. Well, that might be Harry Sargent, I should say. I've actually got his name down here. I can't read my own writing. Now it's towards Judd Pollard. Judd Pollard's kick goes up further forward. Lindisfarne with the numbers around this one. They're going to go forward again. Looks for Hall. Hall's in best position. He's just rolling, rolling. Little cheeky push from Hall. But the boundary line is the friend for Clarence. And it is out of bounds. It's a dangerous spot to throw it in. Lindisfarne got a goal late in that first half. Bashton got one late. They might get another one here. Quick snap on goal. I think that is the goal of the day. No, it's not. It's the point of the day. So fortunate for Clarence. So hang on here. Scoreless first half for them. Now it's down here to half back. And the mark is taken. And the bell is rung. It's afternoon tea. It's three quarter time here on Duff TV. And Lindisfarne with the commanding lead. We'll just see this shot on goal late in this quarter. It was a beauty. Was it divine? I'm not 100% sure. I can't quite see who that was. It was a bit of electric bit of football. And we're going to have a little break here as the players will have a rest. Just congratulating each other there, the Lindisfarne players. I'll be cock a at the moment, as will be Adrian Goodwin. We'll be very happy with the performance of his team. And more than happy that the way they play. But Clarence, look, they've played really well today. We've had plenty of players that had a, an impact. Sylvester, Sargent, Atha, Lucas Dingle, Elijah Ryan. This STJFL game, here come the players back out onto Anzac Park, the last instalment of this under 12.
match here. On a Sunday, it's Duff TV. And let's see if Clarence can get a little bit of momentum going and start to get that scoreboard ticking over for them. They're kicking with the breeze in this last quarter. And I imagine we're going to have a bit of a fight back here from Clarence. Robbie Devine with the ball. Jeez, he throws that a long way in the air. It took a while to come down as it swung in the air. Lucas Dingle in the ruck at the moment. Marriott, once again, contested ball, gets it out. Half forward, and uh, he finds one of his mates there in Whitelaw. Whitelaw's gone forward, but look at it. Whitelaw's kick's really good. So, play on here as Lindisfarne driving it up towards the pocket. And a great defensive mark taken by Jasper Hay. He's certainly been a stoic player for Clarence Day. Stoic's probably unfair, really, when you seem to lose your stoic, but a gifted game from him. Tenbroke. Marriott trying to put some pressure on there with a the smother. Towards Goodwin. Goodwin just over his shoulder then. Spinning out of that tackle, nicely done by Elijah Ryan. Elijah Ryan that gets held up and it'll be held up enough for the umpire to blow the whistle in and throw it up. The right hand of Judd Pollard trying to reach down and get onto that one. Clarence now bring the ball out. Mark just falling off the chest of that player. Now it's towards Ransley for the two blues. Ransley brings it up further afield. Lateral kick. It's not a bad option. Stewart. Stewart kicks it in towards the pocket. There's a race on here. Probably going to get to it first is Whitelaw. Whitelaw just stubs it off, his off the ground. Goes again. Bastion in the pocket. Bastion. Kick is smothered. Still Lindisfarne applying pressure. Trying to grab it and hold that one up is Linden. They'll just release it for now. Knock to the ground. Sylvester goes back. Sargent in there. Lindisfarne. Hack towards the goal line. A great defensive mark taken. And they hold and repel as the breeze has definitely dropped here. So they had the advantage in that first quarter when it was a very stiff and strong breeze blowing down towards that pocket at the southern end of the ground here. Marriott steaming out. Brilliant kick from Marriott. That's quality football. Marriott moves it on towards home. Home's in the goal square. And a mark is being taken. And the applaud from Baston. And it's number 17 again. And we apologise. We still don't have his name. And he's going to get his second shot on goal. Right in front. Shouldn't have too many problems with this. In fact, the kick has probably just gone through the fingertips. Now, there is a bit of action there, but it's a bit late. Let's see here on the replay. It was a nicely worked ball. Look at this mark taken. That's a good juggling mark. And hard to do, I can tell you. So Clarence have got to bring the ball out. We've just got the, the camera kind of in the pocket here. This makes it a little bit difficult with the depth perception to be knowing exactly where the ball is, but Ben Duffy's done a great job today <laughs> on the camera. We used to call him the work experience kid, but I think he's genuine camera person now. Linda Smart. Trying to keep Clarence goalless in this game. It'll be quite an achievement. For a good team, Clarence. have got a, a bunch of talented footballers in their side. And a very proud junior and senior football team. Trying to win that one down was home. Marion just going out of bounds with the ball. Flying across the boundary line. Just in front of some drink station there. Might just need to move that there. Make sure it doesn't run into take out. There's a lot of health and safety issues these days. Dingle in the ruck. Boots it forward. Here come Lindisfarne again. Always hasn't been, I should say, there hasn't been a lot of space in the middle of the ground. Lovely handball from Clark. Garrett. Had a good first quarter, Garrett. Now, over the back, Pollard. Trying to push his way forward. Also is in there is Davey. And Clarence with their opportunity, just with a, a small few changes in the forward line. Mansfield's gone forward by the look of it. He'll be in this ruck contest. He'll be going up against home. Brain with a quick kick out. And it's fortuitous finds Williams. Kobe Williams. Clark in there. Spins around one. Neat kick back in. Forward 50. Nearly marked by Pollard. Rebounded off again. And look who it is. It's Marriott. Marriott now. 
just gets enough height on that. Great tackle laid by Max Sylvester. Holding the ball. <coughs> Not holding the football, it's going to be ball up. Hard work sometimes to have to commentate the whole game and you've got to have a sneeze or a, or a sniffs. Apologies there. Try to get the microphone well away from the mouth and that's out of bounds. So a bit of wind. That car windscreen wiper's going. Might be just a couple of spots of rain here at the moment. Either yeah, they just decided just to wipe the bugs off it. Not a lot of it is any at the moment. So Linda's fine. Through Williams. Williams. Divine. Divine pushed in the back. Tries to win the football. Can't marry it with some pressure. Now it's towards Ryan. Ryan kicks up to half forward. Numbers here with Linda's fun. And one of those players is Darcy Goodwin. Darcy Goodwin kicks it out towards Tenbroke. Brain. Bashes it forward. Stewart. Trying to reach down and pick it up. Marriott. He's shoved into the ground. Now if I just let that one go. It's been good umpiring today. Now it's Darcy Goodwin for Linda's fun. Creaming through there is the class of Lockie Jones. He might get it back again here, Jones. He kicks it off the ground. It's probably going to go to the boundary line just in front of Baston. Baston keeps it going, but now it does find the white line. We'll have a break here. So five gone. Lindisfarne with the advantage. Those two goals in that second quarter into the breeze. And they kicked a bunch of goals early. Put this game to bed. Clarence would love to get a goal. Ryan just running on the ball at the moment. Goes past Hay. The advantage here with Clarence, but I reckon that might be a, just a high tackle there. So free kick to Lindisfarne. Just on the edge of their 50. Hay handles over the top. And Clarence release again. That ball just eluding Brain, but he does get it back. He's so determined. And defensive mark taken by Garrett. Garrett's quickly moving the ball out. Looking for the long-reaching arms of Dingle. Just went past Dingle. And Clarence just steady it a little bit. So now it's to Stewart, who's had a fair few possessions in this quarter. And they've all been good. And another player who's had a fair few possessions is young Lockie Jones. He's got a goal. That's about... The first time he's mucked up his kick. It's really difficult, though. The wind's still a problem. The sun is just poking through the clouds here. And Clarence, who had some neat run and a good bit of visual there as it's kicked up towards their centre-half area, but chopped off again by Darcy Goodwin. Darcy moves it towards Stewart. Stewart in best position. He controls it. Clark providing some pressure on him. He in the moves move the ball further afield, looking for Jones. Jones in best position. He's been chased down by Garrett. Works the ball in towards the pocket, trying to find Dawson. Stewart taps in front of him. High kick. Can it be Hay get to it first? He can't. And then there's a quick shot. Well, it was a good one, but it just fell short into that breeze. And Clarence will relieve, but not for long. It's Marriott. Did Marriott get taken high? Always on the ground, slipping over, running, doing everything he needs to do to try and get the football. Clarence work it out now towards Jasper Hay. Jasper Hay with a bit of class. Handball's back. They're standing the ship at the moment. Kick towards the middle of Anzac Park. It was an OK option, but there were two two blues pretty close by. And one of them's got the ball at the moment in Brain. Brain handball's into the pack. Trying to work in, screw his way out there was Darcy Goodwin. Brain again. Quickly kicks it. He kicks it as he's get tackled. Hall. Strength from Hall. Really feisty football at the moment. Darcy Goodwin again, but Clarence Rappel again. This is actually a fantastic four or five minutes of football. It's probably been the best for the quarters. The wind has dropped, and it's probably making it a little bit better, but it's going to go forward again. Can Clarence get an opportunity to score a goal? The leading forward coming out, and it's going to be a throw up here. So a chance for Clarence. Let's see some numbers around this ball. Try and hold it in for a period of time. Look out for Sylvester. Hey. That's good from Hay. He's trying to find Sergeant. Mrs. Sergeant. 
coming back out now. Here's a chance for Clarence for their first goal. And it's just to the right behind. And there's a few drops of rain on the lens there of the camera. So it has had a, we've had a couple of very, very, very light drops here. And Archie Devine with the kick. Nearly nine gone here in this cracking under 12 game. And don't let the scoreboard be the true indicator. The metrics don't describe the optics. And the visuals of this game has been excellent, even though it's been difficult conditions. We've just shone the light on a couple of outstanding footballers. Sargent in the pocket, screws around onto his right. Is he going to get the first goal for Clarence? And he does. Harry Sargent with the goal. Clarence with their first 10 minutes. You wouldn't have thought it. 10 minutes into the last quarter, Clarence get their first goal. We'll see you in the mood for you to replay. Sargent just on the edge here. Here he's just, has a good handball, a brilliant handball. Sargent so elusive. Just see the skill level there from Sargent. He went to go one way, just hesitated. A unique skill at this age, I can tell you, to be able to do that with a, a lot of cues and information around you, a lot of defensive pressure to be able to stop, hesitate, and then be controlled enough to kick. That's a very elite bit of skill from Harry Sargent. So well done. Clarence on the board. Can they force another one? Scoreboard suddenly looks exponentially better for Clarence on one goal six. It's one out again by the two Blues. Kick goes up to the middle of Anzac Park. Isaac Fry in there. Might get it again, Fry. Brain. He's still on his knees, Brain. And there's a little scrubby kick out to a little bit of space. Ten broke. In the pocket now is Fletcher home. Fletcher home. Gets around one. Hamble's off the sergeant. Sergeant doesn't have a lot of room to work with. Goes around one, goes around two. Sergeant! Well, I don't know, but that would have got me out of my seat, I reckon, if Sergeant had to kick that goal. It would have been two in about a minute. The last one was a beauty, and that one would have been unbelievable. Once again, showing the ability to dodge and weave. What a skill that is at this age. Kick goes higher towards Stewart. It's being held up here. Now it's just hacked a little bit further along. Rolling around onto his right boot. Another opportunity for Clarence. So the peppering the goals at the moment. And unable to get what they need. That is another six pointer. Ruck contest. Whitelaw. Whitelaw snapping it. Whitelaw might have one as well. No, it's touched well. The goal umpire didn't get sight on them, but I think that's okay. A nice bit of work from the goal umpire. Probably was 50 50. We're just seeing the replay. Yes, that was touched. But it doesn't matter. They've responded again, and that is a goal. We're a little bit behind the action then. I think it might be a goal to Pollard. Here we see it again. Might have been Sergeant. Yes, it was Sergeant. So he's got a couple. And suddenly it's 28 points. And he's had a beauty today and a couple of goals. So there's the replay. A little quick snapshot. Oh, opportunist ever, the opportunist, Harry Sergeant. And with 12 and a half gone here in the last quarter, Clarence getting a scoreline, which is much more reflective of what we've seen out here today. Late in winter, or well certainly late in the football season, the, win the season of football. So, Kobe Williams. Dingle will get to it first, leans down. Then he goes to ground. Jones now. Ball's just rolling out towards the 50 line there for the two Blues. Still in play. Still in play. Nearly grabbed by Watkinson for Lindisfarne. And it's still a long way from the action here and a long way from being stopped, and now it is. So the umpire doing the just desserts there. So about a couple of minutes left. 28-point lead here on the Jackson Motor Company scoreboard. Lindisfarne aren't done, I don't reckon. 
Kick into the pocket. Nearly a diving mark. Where's Millwood? That was Bastion. Clarence should just be able to get this one out for a little while. And that's released for now. Up to their half-back line. But it doesn't matter. Tenbroke. Bit of class. Mark taken. Not really. Second grab. Just couldn't quite bring it back into his chest. Jones held up in the tackle. It's going to be a stoppage here. Yeah, the dying stages of this game here on Duff TV. And here's a replay. And in fact, that is the sound. Our clock is a little behind, actually. May have just started a bit late. It is the end of the game here on Duff TV. And it's the end of the game here in the under 12s. It's Lindisfarne comfortably in the end. Baston of the Archie variety with a couple. But for me, it was the day for Ned Marriott, who had a blinder. Plenty of contributors for both teams. Noah Stewart was great. Watkinson had a good last quarter. Nick still a little quiet, but did pretty well. Jones was fantastic. Archie Devine got a few touches. Brain was brilliant through out for the game. Plenty of good players for Clarence. Judd Pollard in defence was really good, but that is the end of the game. And look, we're going to have the song here on Duff TV, so enjoy the song here. What's really important is, is that all our efforts, all our parents' efforts, and everybody, it's all because of you kids and the mateship that you kids are getting at the minute, is first rate. The way you stick up for each other on the ground and play for each other is first rate. So full credit. Okay? We're going to give out six Lamenza vouchers. Okay? Now, I, I said at the very beginning, when I was handing these out, it's not necessarily to the best players, but it's to the players that have played their better games according to their ability and where they actually play. So, our, um, so today we go to Isaac Fry at both ends of the ground. <laughs> we're going to Fletcher Hall and play back midfield in the match. Archie Bastard and kicks three goals. Here we go. It's Lindisfarne, it's Millwood, 100 games, the veteran of under-12s. And it is a wonderful effort. You're a man on Duff TV. I'm Aaron Robertson. We'll see you very much soon here on Duff TV.